Watching and copying a more experienced sewist in sewers is a great way to actually learn how to sew. But there are some things that you absolutely do not, not want to copy what experienced sewists do. So I thought this would be a really fun video. We're going to talk about the top four things that you do not want to copy from experienced sewists. <laughs> Welcome back my friends. It is delightful to have you here as always. Welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com and here on this YouTube channel we talk about everything garment sewing to help you improve your garment sewing. So if it's something that you're interested in do hit the subscribe button down below so you can get notified of all the future videos. This video idea came up from, well, whilst I was sewing myself and making uh, making tutorials actually for Vintage Sewing School in that uh, I was doing something and in my mind thinking about, oh no, I the way that I'm doing it now is not the way that I would do it or want to see whatever I was demonstrating be done when I was learning. It's kind of a case of uh, do as I say, not do as I do sort of situation. And so I realized that there are lots of things when we watch people sewing, more experienced people sewing, for example, that we just actually don't want to copy when we first start because it'll get you into all kinds of trouble because you just, I guess we're just not ready for it when we're learning. You need to know some things before you can do these types of things. I think this will make sense as we go through our list more. So let's start with the first one. And that is to not move your patterns and your fabric around when you're trying to cut them out. So what I mean is you'll often see me and lots of other people on YouTube and as you're trying to cut out your patterns, you'll move your fabric around like this way and cut out this and then move it back around here and cut this out and then fold this up and try and cut, 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 and roll this around and we're moving it around all the place. Don't copy that. I remember I used to see this and think that that's just what you do. And so you, like you move the fabric around, you stay put and you move the fabric around to get in the right position. Then of course the problem arises is when you do that with say rayon or silk or chiffon and it is a total nightmare. That is not the way that you should cut fabric at all. So what do we do here? This is a case of uh, when you're more experienced, you'll know the fabric that you're working with and you'll know what you can get away with. There's always exceptions to the rules. The rule is, is that you put your fabric down and you lay it out and you move around to, uh, to suit where you need to cut. You don't move the fabric. That is the rule. Of course, then as you get a bit more experienced, you realize there are some exceptions. If you are using plain cotton that doesn't move anywhere, it's not very slippery fabric, you can get away with moving this around because you'll see it. You'll just know when the fabric's shifting, if your pattern's shifting, you'll know as you raise it, as you not, if it's moving at all, you'll actually know these minute details. You'll just notice them more and that is when you can actually make exceptions to the rule. But as a standard, don't copy people when you see them do this as when you're just starting out, you lay your fabric flat, you keep it flat and you move around to cut it out. That is the fail safe way. The next one is don't sew without pins. Now I am absolutely guilty of doing this. I will just uh, sew without pins all the time. And I often make videos where I do that and show that which is totally fine, except that as a beginner, you look and you see people just whizzing through, no pins, Ugh, so fantastic. And then you think that's what I should be doing, isn't it? I must use too many pins. No, 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 no. So using no pins is something that you want to aim to as you get more experienced. You'll need less and less pins to actually uh, sew and keep everything together nicely. But when you first start, that's what pins are for, is to keep everything in place so you don't have to think about the foot, the pressure, the moving of this, the pins, taking them out of like everything all at once is uh, sort of too much to have to worry about manipulating the fabric as well. Your pins will keep everything in place so you can just focus on sewing straight or curved or whatever you're doing and not have to, to worry. Using less and less pins is something you'll work towards, but don't see experienced sewists do this and think that that's what you should be doing. Absolutely not. You just work towards it because 
No pens is a little bit easier sometimes, but you'll always still be using some pens. And the next thing is do not eyeball an amount. Measure it. <laughs> so, so often I, you know, people copy what I do, for example, and particularly in vintage sewing school, and you think you measure out, um, you know, in your pattern making or pinning something, measure, you know, and you'll say about, you know, do your seam allowance 1.5 and I will just get the pattern or the paper and just put a pin in there or draw it in and mark it without measuring it. That's, this is definitely a case of, um, you know, do as I say, not as I do. You need to measure it. Why? Because, for example, after 10,000 times of measuring the same amount, let's say 5 eighths or 1.5 centimeters, you know how much that is without having to measure it. You just, you're like, your perception just knows where that is. But it takes 10,000 times before you can actually do that. Uh, and as beginners, we see people just sort of marking in seam allowances or pinning in approximately where it is. It's actually pretty much measured just because of like muscle memory and repeat. You need to measure it though when you start. I was so guilty of doing this. I think oh, I just eyeball it. It's close enough, right? No, that got me into so much trouble. So always measure things. Even when you see people eyeballing it, uh, their, their amounts, don't copy that. Do measure all the time and you'll get the best results. And after doing it, measuring it 10,000 times yourself, you'll also be able to eyeball it in the future because your eyeballing will be completely accurate. And then the next one, you don't want to fit over your clothes. So this is a really, really, really big one. And I think super important because so often we see people and they're fitting over the top of their clothes because well, one, if you're watching someone do it, they're not going to be probably nude or in their underwear as much or publicly on the internet, of course, as well. You're going to have some kind of clothing underneath for uh, modesty reasons usually. And of course, sometimes we do just, just get lazy and we put it over the top of our clothes. It's super important that you don't do this. I used to fall into this trap that you just quickly pop it on over the top and think, oh yeah, it's kind of okay, yeah, it looks good. And then of course you uh, try it on the finished garment and realize it fits completely differently when you don't have anything underneath it. Yeah, so you want to be making sure that you fit your uh, toiles, your, uh, even your outside shell garments. You want to fit them on your body. You want to, one, have the undergarments that you plan on wearing with that garment. Bras are very, very in particular. You want the same sort of height adjustment on your bust. Makes a huge difference. So the undergarments you're going to wear and any extra clothing at all does add bulk. It adds stickiness that really affects the fit. And when you're just doing this for the first time, you don't know how to counteract any of those types of measures. That's the rule. Of course, as you get more experienced, you realize there's exceptions to the rules. And that is that, well, you can, if you know what you're looking for. So something tight like this, it might not add too much bulk, but it's certainly adding sticky areas. So it's going to feel a lot different, this bodice, without this top underneath. And as you just get more experienced, you know what to expect and you know how to sort of make allowances for those differences differences in fit with having a garment underneath. So make sure that you don't copy that from the experienced sewers always just fit it on yourself with nothing underneath and the undergarments you're going to wear. I share all of these tips and more over at vintagesewingschool.com where I can really help take your sewing to the next level. I'd love to have you there. There are links down below uh, to that. So tell me my sewing friends, I would love to hear from you. What uh, things have you seen on YouTube or experience so as doing that you just kind of copied blindly that you realized was a real mistake to copy as a beginner. I would love to hear your answers down below and remember to read all those comments because there will be so many great tips down there. Perhaps we'll even make a whole nother video uh, with them. So thank you so very much for watching and until next time my sewing friends, bye. Happy sewing. Bye.